Welcome, welcome. So Stacy was kind enough to give me permission to do a meditation from my tradition. So I am excited to share that with you. And I know some people might still be rolling in into the Zoom world, uh, but I'll just go ahead and get started and say thank you, each of you for joining. I know that uh, we have busy lives and especially those of you who keep showing up. I appreciate the consistency, And I, I give a special shout out to uh, the folks of color joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure to have you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to invite folks to grab a piece of paper and a pen because we will be kind of journaling a little bit after we do a meditation. And maybe I'll just have folks drop into the chat. Uh, what's the weather like on the inside? You know, if we were to imagine that there's a weather report, whether it's inside our body or inside our emotions, it could be clear skies, cloudy skies, uh, stormy, clear, still. Let's go ahead and drop into the chat so we can all become present with where we are, and how we are, steady and calm. What's the weather like inside? Windy. And we welcome it all. There's no judgment. That's the beauty of this work. There's a uh -huh, refreshing drizzle. Oh yeah, we must be in a hot place. <laughs> Balmy, flurries, yeah, I know that one. Storms threatening on the horizon. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. You're coming into the space and sharing the wholeness of how you are in this moment. Sticky, oh yeah. <laughs> All right, that's so, me, sticky fingers, apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem. So just to introduce myself, my name is Anouk Shambrook. I am the daughter of immigrants from Haiti and Ireland. I identify as Black. And my parents were raised Catholic, but they went to India and got exposed to Buddhism. So they taught me to, kid, uh, to meditate when I was a kid. And they also taught me this idea that you can experience things that go beyond what science understands. I really like that. Um, and I read the Tao of Physics in high school, and I loved that there was this science that somehow was speaking to these mysteries and paradoxes that I was finding in Eastern religions. So I went to Columbia, I was a physics major, and went on to get my PhD in astrophysics. And then I became ill uh, and really had to look at my life as you're theoretically supposed to do in Buddhism, but often, you know, we it's just a mental exercise. We don't really feel it, feel it until later in life. And I thought, wow, when I'm on my deathbed, what do I want to look back on? And that was um that was when I switched fields. I really wanted to be of service. And, um, and so here we are. A lot of the work that I do is bringing different tools to help people transform their hearts and their minds and to reconnect with their hearts. Uh, some of what I do is working with the unconscious through aware ego consulting. And some of it is trauma resilience. Uh, I recognize some of you from the last time I offered a teaching here where we were talking about trauma and how to tune into the body and come back into our resilient zone so that we can have some of these challenging conversations around race. So today, what we're going to explore, uh, well, first I'll give you an overview. Um, I will offer uh, a little background of the practice we'll do called Tonglen, then we'll be going into the guided meditation. Then we'll have short dyads for you to share what arose for you in the meditation. And then we'll have a Q and A. And as always, before we dive into a practice, we, we establish our orientation and our intention. 
because that greatly impacts how we perceive and receive information and experiences. Um, now, sometimes um, there are folks who are new to Buddhism. Um, and also sometimes uh, there's great power in ritual and tradition and all being able to come together with the same ritual and tradition. And from time to time, sometimes it's helpful to mix it up a little. Sometimes we can get a little bit on cruise control. And so in that spirit, I'm going to be kind of asking questions and to ask you to feel into the truth of what do you actually take refuge in in your life right now? And so while we take refuge, I invite you to feel into something bigger than yourself that you can take refuge in and you can rest into that protects you. And if it feels supportive, you can put one hand on your heart to bring your attention to a felt sensation of refuge. And so in practice these days is refuge the earth where gravity always offers you a place of belonging, no matter what country or city you're in, is refuge some of your well ancestors without whom you wouldn't be here today. Is your refuge a spiritual teacher or a spiritual being in whom you can take refuge? Or is it a philosophical or spiritual set of teachings? A spiritual community aligned with your core values? Or a felt sense of profound truth or unconditional love? So I'm just gonna give you a moment to feel into, in practice, what are you taking refuge in these days? And today, what would you like to intentionally take refuge in during this gathering? So the invitation is to feel into something that you deeply resonate with. And then uh, in Mahayana Buddhism, we always like to establish our motivation to not just practice for ourselves, but for the sake of all beings. And one doorway to that motivation is the South African phrase, Ubuntu. And that can be loosely translated as I am because we are. So I invite you to feel into how we are all interconnected, all of us on this Zoom call, as well as other two-legged, four-legged, winged and gilled creatures, and even the plants. So I invite you to breathe in and out for a cycle as you breathe in, breathing in your attention to benefit all beings, and as you breathe out, to breathe out that offering. And if you have your hand on your chest, you can relax your hand, and I'll give a little introduction to this practice of Tonglen. So Tonglen is a practice in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, and it's also known as taking and sending. So this is different from the metta practice that some of you may know, where metta is loving kindness, you might give to yourself or give to others. But Tonglen is actually about reversing our usual logic of avoiding suffering and seeking pleasure. And I have to say, as humans, most of us have that, that habit, that conditioning. And in a very simple way in Tonglen practice, with every in-breath, we will be visualizing taking in the pain of others. And with every out-breath, we will send whatever would bring ease, joy, freedom. And in the process of doing this practice, we become liberated from age old patterns of selfishness. And we end up feeling love for both ourselves and others. So Tonglen awakens our compassion and introduces us to a far bigger view of reality. 
It introduces us to the unlimited spaciousness of awareness that is beyond space and beyond time. So in this moment, I invite you to tune into something that has no beginning and no end. And by doing this practice, we begin to connect with the open dimension of our being. Tonglen, the, the foundation for it is really dropping into something that's out of our ordinary thinking mind. And there's, there's this sense uh, traditionally in our daily lives to have a sense of separation, a sense that I am here and everything is out there. And the culture of Newtonian physics you know, that it's linear, it's either or. It's challenging when you encounter a contradiction. And there is an African logic called diunital cognition, which is inclusive and both and, an undivided whole, where something can be one thing and another thing at the same time without contradicting itself. And, you know, you could say that's the spirit of modern physics and the wave, powder, uh, wave particle duality, that people were initially flabbergasted to find out that light could both be a particle and a wave and how it manifested depended on the environment. So in Buddhism, we speak of a metaphor where often we look at the waves of the ocean as individual objects, individual events, and we forget that the waves are part of a larger whole, the ocean. And we humans can be a bit similar where we're conditioned to perceive ourselves as separate from everything else. So if we approached Tonglen from our ordinary thinking mind, which has been swimming in the culture of dichotomy and duality, then the thought of voluntarily taking on the suffering of others can sound crazy. But if instead we first connect with the ground of our being, our essence that cannot be harmed, if we relax into something far vaster than our thinking mind and trust in something that may not be visible, but can be felt, it changes the whole experience of taking on the suffering of others. It allows us to become larger than hope and fear larger than good person, bad person, larger than all the contradictions. And from this place, we can transmute energy. So at this point, um, I'm still kind of introducing Tonglen. And an example of someone who is quite extraordinary at this was Elder Bernard Lafayette. He is a contemporary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was fighting for racial justice. And when a Ku Klux Klan member had a gun to the back of his head and was about to shoot him, it is said that Elder Lafayette turned and looked the shooter straight in the eyes with no fear and no hate. So even when his life was literally on the line, he was able to connect with something greater. And it is said that what he did was a form of Tonglen, breathing in the suffering of a man who must have been so disconnected with his own heart, with his own humanity, to be trying to kill Elder Lafayette who posed no threat. It is said that the Klan member pulled the trigger and the gun didn't shoot. And apparently he did this three more times and the gun faltered. And on the fourth time, it is said that the shooter left weeping. And there are many stories like this uh, about Tibetans, especially in the 50s and 60s who were imprisoned, tortured and killed by the Chinese. 
So these are examples of Olympian Tonglen practitioners. And while we may not become that strong in this lifetime, we can aspire to build our Tonglen muscles. So the first step is to drop into a place that is bigger than our ordinary mind. So I invite you to recall a moment when you were in awe, perhaps gazing into the eyes of a newborn baby, or for those of you who happen to grow up around nature, maybe you can recall a moment as a child of like being in awe of nature in an effortless moment where there's no separation between you and nature. Uh, it could be a moment if you're a dancer, when you shift from dancing to becoming the dance, or the music is dancing you, or an artist. Um, sometimes it's difficult to capture in words, but tap into the experience, that sense of allowing a flow. For some of us, it's in sports, feeling in the zone, or perhaps floating in the ocean. Have you ever felt like the boundaries of your body dissolve and the fluid inside feels like it blends with the fluid outside? You feel part of a whole? Or perhaps gazing up at the night sky, looking into what feels like infinite space. Have you ever felt your mind crack open at the vastness, at the beauty? So I would invite you to recall an experience that you have had where you felt connected to a sense of openness, maybe something that can't be captured in words but can be felt, that is spontaneously present, sometimes exquisitely alive, and perhaps you felt one with everything. So whatever that experience is for you, I'll be referring to it as uh, relaxing into the ground of your being or into the infinite part of you. And we'll tap into that during the meditation. So traditionally, Tonglen is very simple. Uh, as I said, you connect with the infinite or the ground of being or your Buddha nature. You take in people suffering with the in-breath and breathe out relief and offerings on the out-breath. And in this version of Tonglen, I've added the elements of fire and earth, and that's optional. Uh, you can do a more traditional one with Pema Chodron online. So I'll invite folks to do a little humming and rocking. Helps us come into the body, Come into the present moment. You keep humming and I'll just guide a little bit. Focus on the vibration of the hum in your body. See if you can feel it in your throat, in your chest, in your belly. See if you can feel it all the way down in your feet, bathing your body in the vibration. And I invite you to do a brief body scan, letting the humming and rocking go. Starting with your feet, noticing any pleasant or neutral sensations, your calves, your knees, thighs, pelvis, belly, 
lower back, upper back, chest, hands, forearms, upper arms, shoulders, neck, and head. Noticing any pleasant or neutral sensations. Notice your in-breath and out-breath. And I invite you to notice the contact between your legs, whatever you're sitting on. And if it feels comfortable, I invite you to allow just a little bit more of your weight to sink into the chair that is supporting you or whatever it is you're sitting or lying on. See if we can surrender just a little bit and allow the earth to support us. And I invite you to imagine that you're sitting at the sea. You can see the waves, you can smell the salt in the ocean, you can feel the breeze on your skin. It's a perfect temperature. There are small, steady waves breaking on the shore. And then I invite you to expand your awareness into the room where you are, feeling the space around you, perhaps hearing different sounds in the space around you. And I invite you to hear the space the silence and not just the sound. Perhaps resting on the space between the inhale and the exhale. Now I invite you to connect again with that infinite part of you, that ground of your being, the essence that can't be harmed, whether it's in the flow or in awe of nature, whatever form it takes, being inseparable with everything. From this place, I invite you to feel the aspiration that everyone experience this openness, this freedom right here in this moment. So now I invite you to think of a particular person that you would like to support and offer this Tongan meditation to. And bring that person to your heart mind. And you can breathe at a natural pace. I'll be giving you guidance for your in breath and out breath, but you can just apply it whenever you're naturally breathing in or breathing out. No need to wait for my prompts. So thinking of someone who you care for, who could use some support, someone having some difficulty, and let yourself be with that person. And feel the texture of their challenge or difficulty. Feel what an embodied sense of their suffering is. 
Then I invite you with your in-breath to breathe in feelings of heaviness or heat or claustrophobia or some kind of embodied sense of their challenge. And breathing out feelings of coolness, lightness, ease, freshness. And if you like, you can allow the heat of the sun in your heart to melt whatever that person is suffering from transforming it in our heart and allowing it to pass through to the earth to be composted. So breathing in, we take in the negative energy through all the pores of the body. And breathing out, we radiate positive energy completely through all the pores in your body. I invite you to Synchronize this with your in and out breaths. As we breathe out, we infuse the person energetically with whatever qualities would support them in this moment. It might be relief of physical pain, it could be relief of financial stress. Could be feeling loved for who they are. It could be something that they may not even consciously know they long for, but the cells in their body remember. Breathing in the suffering, breathing out relief, transforming it in the fire of your heart. Now I invite you to extend this offering to everyone who has a similar challenge or suffering as that person you called to mind. And so breathing in the suffering of all those people and breathing out compassion, ease, love, freedom. Now you can allow that person and all of those who suffer from something similar to dissolve. And I invite you to call to your heart mind, George Floyd. Let yourself be with him. Notice what happens in your body. And from this infinite place, from our essence that can never be harmed, we breathe in his suffering in whatever embodied way it comes, what kind of texture it has, whether it's a heat or heaviness or a sense of claustrophobia. We transform that suffering in our heart, offering it to the earth to be composted. And as we breathe out, we breathe out feelings of coolness, lightness, and freshness. And 
as we breathe out, we offer all the qualities that would support you. And if it's easier to envision someone who is still living and has been in a similar situation and survived, then go with whatever resonates with you that allows you to breathe in the suffering with all the pores of your body. And as you breathe out, radiating positive energy and whatever it is that would serve their ease, their freedom from suffering, their joy. And if there's any contraction within you as you do this, I invite you to reconnect with that sense of awe or openness or being in the flow. Breathing in the suffering and breathing out relief and whatever qualities would support that person. Now I invite you to extend that compassion to George Floyd's family, those who have lost loved ones to murder by the police because of their skin color. Extend that compassion to other black and brown skinned people who live in fear, fear for their lives, literally. Giving them a moment of break, breathing in their suffering and breathing out relief, whatever it is they need in this moment. Gradually, as we bring the meditation to a close, we can allow George Floyd, his family, all the black and brown skinned people who live in fear for their lives and allow that to dissolve. And then to dedicate the merit. If there's any goodness from this practice, we pray that it benefits all beings. However it is in your heart, I'd like to offer 
any goodness that has arisen. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to journal or draw about what was your experience that you tapped into near the beginning of some experience where you felt connected with everything or in the flow or in awe of nature. What was that, that felt sense of connecting with an infinite part of you? Then I invite you to journal about what it was like to take in the suffering, to go against our conditioning of seeking pleasure and trying to avoid pain. What was it like to welcome in the pain and transform it and offer in ease? So we're going to go into breakout rooms and I'm going to ask folks to share, um, to share first, what, what was it that uh, you connected with that felt like an infinite sense of a part of you, a moment of awe connected with things and um, and then to share how the meditation was for you. So we'll go ahead and have each person share for four minutes and then we'll switch. And uh, I'll, I'll send you a little message in the breakout rooms when we're ready to switch. And I would ask whoever has the birthday soonest gets to speak first. 
So, uh -huh. <laughs> so looking forward to seeing you all back here in about eight minutes. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for your trust in journeying with each other and together as a group. So I'd like to invite folks to share. Maybe we'll share about the first part of when are moments when you feel like you're relaxing into the ground of being or feeling part of the flow or maybe having a moment of awe. They say that when we're born, we have that openness. We haven't, we haven't created this sense of separation yet. And there's a wholeness and it's extraordinary. And so when we look into the eyes of a newborn, it's like it awakens that within us that we sometimes forget experientially. And then what happens, of course, is the baby starts to learn things and then have a sense of separation. And so all of us, you know, in our path, ideally come to be able to recognize those moments when we feel that wholeness, that profound stillness, that profound inseparability of everything. And when we recognize it and value it, then we can learn to drop in more often. And the more often that we drop in, the more freedom we offer people. So imagine like as each of you were sharing, there was kind of a vibe you know, and imagine if you had that presence in more of your life, like that's an offering. And the last time I was here, I was talking about our capacity to deepen our resilience zone so that we can offer even when times are more challenging. And these experiences are like resources that we can call to our mind body and it's, it's really an offering, really a tremendous offering. So with that, then I'll ask, uh, how was the Tonglen practice of going against our habit of wanting pleasure and trying to avoid the pain and instead saying, bring it, all right, <laughs> bring it. <laughs> how was that? And you can also distinguish between the first part where I kind of let you choose someone of your choice, you know, someone you care for who's having a problem, a challenge. And then the second part, whether it's George Floyd or many people who've been in that situation but survived it. If, if at the beginning, before we talked about connecting with, you know, an infinite part of you, if I'd said, oh, you're going to breathe in the suffering. And then once you breathe in the suffering, you're going to breathe in the suffering of anyone similar to that. <laughs> then I don't think your first guess would have been, oh, I'm going to feel such a sense of calm. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. yeah. So there's, there's a lot of power in this practice. And I would invite you to, uh, to consider practicing it, even if it's just for a few minutes each day. And I really, um, I commend you for catching the dissociation. Um, you know, a lot of us have experienced trauma and the dissociation meaning to like check out from the body is, is one description in case people don't know exactly what that means. Um, then in some cases that is what has allowed us to survive. And like people who have been enslaved, you know, when they have been suffering from, from whipping, from raping, from all sorts of torture, then these survival mechanisms of the, the body are, are brilliant. Um, but over time, part of our practice is bringing healing to ourselves so that we have greater capacity to be present with others. 
And so I just really want to, you know, say uh, hats off that you notice this dissociation. It's in the noticing that we begin to have choice. When we don't notice and it just happens, then we're checked out and we kind of think that things are fine. <laughs> I, I, I would add that um, I, I imagine that bringing on George Floyd might have had a different flavor than the first visualization. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And that so often we don't open, even though, especially Mahayana Buddhists, we're supposed to do it for the benefit of all beings. But in practice, you know, most white folks, even if it's unconscious, have closed their hearts to Black people. Like if they hadn't, there's no way that people could continue to see the, the violence that happens, even just not having access to decent schools, access to, to food. There's, there's so many levels at which white supremacy is impacting our society. And, and there has to be this disconnection from our hearts in order to be okay with that. And to not say no, you know, and, and we've just seen it so many times when something in the news, if it's a, a white person, the reaction is completely different. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you very much. Resma Menekum in his book, My Grandmother's Hand, speaks to the trauma of white folks, generations leading to you know, their actions. And so I think one level of offering is, may you heal your internal trauma so that you don't have to keep blowing that dirty pain on others. Um, and then, so it can be a sense of healing. I think another is a sense of belonging, like just a sense of feeling loved so that you don't have to be putting someone down and making an other and actively oppressing them in order for you to have an illusion of feeling okay. Uh, so then I will invite other people to chime in. You know, part of my training is in working with trauma and healing trauma. And so I do think that there's a, a fine line between on one hand, the wisdom of this practice, of going against our habit of going towards pleasure and away from suffering versus we don't want to re-traumatize ourselves and that's why the whole, you could say, kind of resourcing practice that we did um, is an essential element. And you can, um, in the traditional Tongman practice, then you're dropping into your Buddha nature as the foundation for doing the practice. But you can also um, experiment with bringing in other resources. And so it could be uh, a well ancestor, it could be a pet, it could be like just whatever helps you. It could, I mean, in, in Vajrayana, of course, we have deities. There's like a whole pantheon to choose from. Um, there are wrathful ones, there are loving ones. Um, but really, uh, to be honest, I have a whole council of folks who've got my back. And when I'm encountering a challenge, especially around race, I drop into knowing that I'm not on my own. And it could even potentially, um, part of your, your counsel can include a moment on this call when we were coming together around experiences where we felt that, that wholeness. Um, so I would definitely invite folks to resource and to, to tune into what, what's supportive of you. 
So it might seem like I'm going against the initial intent of Tonglen, but what I'm saying is I believe that we each have a wisdom of how much to engage and based on where we're at and when to uh, relax a little bit so that we don't re-traumatize ourselves because the trauma is real. I'm gonna ask you to, to ask that question again because we've journeyed a little bit just to drop the pebble into the field and let it ripple again. Okay. I think I asked the question about what is, what do you, Anuk, imagine sending out after taking in as a black or brown body person the suffering of, of another's white supremacy? I also, I feel like as black folks, the degree of suffering, I think opens our heart to a profound degree. I think we have a tremendous amount of wisdom and access to inner freedom. That's a huge gift. It's great that you notice the resistance. That's the edge of our growth, mm -hmm. noticing the resistance. When we notice, we can start to have choice around it. Mm -hmm. All right, I appreciate you uh, guiding us in that practice on it. Um, it really brought to the fore for me how much energy it really takes to stay disconnected to turn away from uh, the suffering of the other that's right next to me or right in front of me. Um, and, you know, how, how conditioned my mind is like, oh, this is going to be heavy. This is going to be dark. This is going to be difficult. This is going all the things, but it's not when I lean in like opening to one another we don't know what it's going to be and it's usually opening no one said it's going to be easy and straightforward but can mm -hmm. i relax into that so um, it's not necessarily a practice i i my go-to practice <laughs> but it's a tremendous reminder that we we are indeed connected to one another, our, my breath, to your breath, to, and that it, it really does matter mm -hmm. what we send out to one another. It really does matter. Thank you. So I just put my email address in the chat because it's possible that in the support of the group, maybe it was a journey, but then afterwards, if you have some reaction and you want a little support with it, you can feel free to contact me. Um, but I do hope that you revisit those amazing experiences that you have had, uh, connecting with the infinite, with the heart, with uh, the ground of being, with the profound stillness, with your inner wisdom and heart. And uh, why wouldn't that be a daily practice, you know? Like such a, such a gift. And then really offering that, that presence and that capacity to others. So we'll just uh, dedicate one last time. If there's any goodness that was generated by our beautiful sharing and our honesty and our openness both sharing as a group and sharing in dyads. We pray that this be of benefit and that all beings find their true home, reconnect with their hearts and find freedom. Ashe. Thank you so much, Anouk, oh, so uh, for bringing your fears brave, wise self. Uh, and thank you all for uh, joining us this evening. And as usual, please consider uh, supporting Anouk's livelihood so that she may continue to bring this 
uh, her beautiful self and wisdom and guide us all in this work. Um, Jessica is going to drop a link in the chat to the Common Ground website and you can find the Truth and Justice Vigil and find a Nook's name. You can also just venture to the Common Ground website on your own, but um, it is because of the generosity of people just like you that allows us to hold space and invite teachers from all over to, to meet us at these intersections. So, mm -hmm. Thank and I'll just so add sure one last that. thing oh, yeah. that yeah. since a lot of what we're doing is uh, hoping to lay a foundation where we can have genuine conversations about race and begin to transform our conditioning around that, then next time you are in that kind of conversation, maybe remember a little Tonglen practice, maybe experiment and see, see how it goes. But ideally, you practice, you know, starting small. You know, I, I, I jumped in with George Floyd, but you can start Tomlin practice with your pet, okay? <laughs> you can start building the muscle. So with that, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.